Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. On the first of this month, I made a video called Why didn't the Japanese use shields or did they? Now that video got quite a lot of views and likes, hence my decision to make a second episode today. All this extra information, I have decided to use a slightly different uh, format than usual. We're going to have a collab video with another YouTuber. So, for this video I have a guest, his name is Anthony Cummings, who is not only a YouTuber, but he's also the founder of the Historical Ninjutsu Research Team. Now, he was kind enough to send me two of the books that he has written. One is called The Book of Ninja, and the other is called The Book of Samurai. Now, I still haven't read them, so I can't really say much about these books, but I will. I promised him that I will. So, I will read these books, and I will also make video reviews about these books. Now, of course, I really appreciate his, his kindness sending me these books, um, but I will be 100% honest. As a matter of fact, I tend to be painfully honest in my uh, reviews and debunking videos, but I think that this is exactly, precisely what makes these videos worth watching. So, if I think that these books are fantastic, I will say so. Uh, but if I don't think that some of the information found in these books is accurate, I will also say so. So I will uh, point out both positive aspects and negative aspects of these books, and then at the end of my reviews, which I will make again when I finish reading them, um, you can make up your mind about these books if you're interested or not. I'll just leave that to you. Okay, so I'm going to give time now to Anthony to give his historical presentation and then at the end of the video we'll just close it up as usual give just a few words uh, of, of my own opinion on, about what he said. So without further ado, let's get back to shield usage in ancient Japan. Anthony. Hello everyone! Before I introduce myself, let's just say a big thank you to Metatron for letting me do this video. Now, my name is Anthony Cummins, and I set on a quest to try and correct the history of the samurai of the nin and the ninja, and to bring it to the Western world. Uh, my Japanese was just base and not good enough, so I moved to Japan. I lived there uh, on and off for uh, between four and five years, and I've put together a small team, a Japanese team, who translate ancient documents and bring them and we publish them for you guys. And I've got a master's degree in ancient history and archaeology from the University of Manchester, and my uh, Japanese team have got all the, the relevant qualifications. One's a monk, one's a translator, a, a professional translator, and another lady deals with social. Now today, we're going to do another part of the uh, Do Samurai Use Shields? Now, um, okay, let me first start with the ninja. The ninja are actually part of the samurai caste system uh, most of the time. We'll do that in another video, but for now, when I say samurai and ninja, just they're, they're, the ninja are one branch of the samurai army. Now, so, last video, Metatron talked about how you can't use you know, a shield with when you're using a bow or when you're using a uh, spear uh, or when you're on horseback sometimes with using two hands on a sword. He's absolutely right. There's not a problem with his video. But there's a bit that I want to add on. There's an element of shields being used by the samurai in one hand and uh, a sword in the other hand. And I'm going to take you. Now what I'm going to do is all the books I'm going to bring out now are books we have published as a team and they're available on Amazon. But what I'll do is I'll put the, um, the front cover here for you. Now let's get to it. Hopefully this won't take too long. Right. The oldest possible reference, but it's debated, is from 1560, um, uh, is in the scroll, the Ninja Scroll by Hattori Hanzo. However, that date has been contested. Uh, I personally don't contest the date, but some people do. And it says, The Shield. So this is in uh, the Secret Editions of the Shinobi uh, by Blue Snake. Uh, the Shield. This is a shield construction of wood from the uh, something tree. Uh, or other such hardwoods. It's three shaku five sun long, so three and a half feet long, and one shaku wide, so about about three and a half by one and a half feet. It has handles for both hands on the inside, and its most important use is, is to thrust the enemy and batter him. A metal shield should sometimes be used. So this is the idea that you're holding it and you're smashing them into the enemy. Or you can put your hand through it and whack the enemy as you move forward. Now you've got to remember, from a shinobi manual, this means they're night raiding. So this means running into a camp with a shield and hitting people hard with it. Now, 
The most important one, the next one, in the same book, is a manual called Gumpo Jyoshu by a man called Ogasawara. Now, Ogasawara was absolutely a Sengoku period warrior, and he's writing in the first two decades of the 1600s, which means this is 1500s information. It's just being, because he was fighting in the 1500s, it's just in the 1600s, after the war finished, he had some time to write down what they were fighting about. So this is absolutely solid primary evidence for shields being used in the Sengoku period. Now this is again from the Shinobi Scrolls of the Gumpo Jyoshu Manual. Uh, I'll put a picture of it here. Uh, the shield torch. This is good when you go on defensive as well as for night attacks. The shield itself should be made of willow trees if possible. It should measure roughly uh, 8 boo in thickness and 2 shaku in length, so quite short. Now this is the important bit. This is a Sengoku period warrior saying this. Who fought on the side of Tokugawa we think. You should be aware however that it is detrimental to make it too big as it will then be difficult to handle your sword. So A, they have a shield and a sword. B, it's about two feet tall uh, with a chainmail skirt. And uh, they are using them together. And he's saying if you make it too big, it starts to get difficult to wield both of them. That, guys, is a Sengoku period fighting samurai, drawing you a picture and telling you what a shield was like in the warring period of Japan. And he uses it with a sword. You don't get any better than that for primary evidence. Uh, then, of course, he goes on to say there's um, a chainmail um, skirt below it. Now, let's go to the next one. Now, the next one is from the same Gumpo Joshu. But remember before when the Shinobi Hiden, the Hattori Hanzo Scroll, talked about um, two hands and holding it and battering it? Here's an image from this. And uh, it says, in ancient times, their length used to be about five shaku, which is five feet tall-ish, well, about nearly six feet. These days, they are much shorter, uh, making it easy, easier for handling. Um, now, it talks a bit about what they should and shouldn't be used as, but it also says here you should make um, iron on the front. He says nowadays you should have iron in the front because muskets were brought into Japan. So there's another two-handled moving forward shield. This is not the tate that Metatron was talking about where you stand it up and put a, a tripod on it. You know, there's a, another leg. This is literally moving forward with a shield and you've got your katana at your side or possibly your spear bearer is behind you, behind the shield. Remember, samurai also had their own form of man at arms. So he would be um, coming up behind. These are called side helpers. Or you also have genin who come down and take bits of the equipment away. Um, there's lots of references about that type of thing, but we won't do that in this video. We'll do another one. If you like this video, me and Metatron will do more. Now, this next one is excellent. It's really interesting. This is again from the Gumpo Joshu. So again, Sengoku period stuff written in the early Edo period. Now, this is a traveling sword rack. It should be made like a folding screen and it should be connected with latches. You can also use it as a shield. Attach handles to the outer edge. This item should be one shaku, five or six sun, so basically nearly two feet in length. And uh, it should be six sun in feet, uh, sorry, in width, which basically just below a foot. And uh, any thickness you like. When you use it as a shield, get, disconnect the latches and use only one section. So what does that mean? You're sleeping with your shield there and it's got your sword on it and you're probably in a pair. And uh, you, you need to wake up quickly and something's happened, a night raid. You quickly unhook like that, put your hand through, grab one, pull your sword and come out with shield and sword and move in and you can fight. Now there's some references just from one manual. Well, there's two manuals, but the main one is Gunpo Jyoshu. So let me take you on. I hope you're not getting bored of this, chaps. There's some stuff to deal with. So, in this book, which is uh, I did at the beginning, which is In Search of the Ninja... It says this, a further record of the warriors of Iga being used as ninja comes from the Iga Ji no Shirube, which is a record of the Iga ninja who served the shogun Tokugawa Iyasu. It states that in 1584, when the shogun attacked and besieged a castle, too many Iga no Mono, so ninja, uh, were shot while scaling the castle walls, and that a total of 75 were killed. 
As a result of the loss of ninja, Lord Yasu gave the order to have them equipped with iron shields. So this means that they're trying to get up the castle walls, but remember this is not classical Japanese castles, this is Sengoku period castles. More mountain hills, um, earthworks, ramparts, palisades. So these guys are trying to get up the difficult bits and they've got iron shields because they're getting musket shot. Boom, boom, boom. So they're bouncing the musket shot off them because too many people are dying. But well, then we go to a manual called the Rodan Shoe. Now the Rodan Shoe talks about the horseback shield. I'll put a picture up here. Now, this is almost the same as the Gunpo Gyoshu one. So, excuse me, I won't go through it too much. However, it talks about a shield being used on horseback in hand. How amazing is that? So not only on ground, but horse riding samurai with a shield in one hand and a katana or spear in the other are charging forward. Absolutely proof that they're using shields in that time. Now the big daddy of a book, this is the Book of Ninja. Now uh, if you want to know anything about ninjutsu, basically you need to get the Book of Ninja if you want to sort of get it sorted. But uh, Fujibayashi actually uh, takes out from the Gunpo Jyoshu, he clearly takes from the Gunpo Jyoshu here. Uh, he's writing about 50 years later, so uh, 1676. And he says the same thing, you know, these are night attack shields. You can move up with them and, you know, attack in that way. But, and lastly, guys, this one is the early 1700s. This is Iga and Koken Ninja Skills by a man called Chikamatsu Shigenori. And he is talking about... The reason I've left this one to last is because chronologically it's towards the end. But also, it uses the word... Te date. Now remember Metatron said Tate were shields, but Date is just you change the D when something to D when something comes before it. So this is Te Date hand shield. Without doubt a shield that you use in your hand as you move along, i.e. not the standing shield uh, he was talking about. So the shield is to be used by holding it towards the direction from which arrows and bullets come. Uh, and then it goes into how to make it, and it's quite a, a bit of a complicated making with whalebone and leather and different um, um, different layers. And it also says you can make a quick one out of boards and soaked wood. Now these are for where when you're going on a night mission, you go into the enemy camp and you think that bullets are coming, the arrows are coming, you're like chunk, chunk, chunk off, and then you can draw your sword, and it's handheld, you can go in still hitting and smashing with it. Right guys, I hope that's not too much information, but basically what we have here is ample evidence from the late 1500s through the Edo period, uh, and even for none of them are post-1750, and it talks about how samurai and shinobi who are part of the samurai war machine are using shields in one hand, swords in the other, or a shield with two handles to move forward, remembering they've got their sword at their side, to smash through the enemy and batter through and then draw and go. He doesn't say whether they put their hand in and carry on, it just tells you about smashing them. So to add to Metatron's video, you get standing shields, but you also get handheld shields with the sword being used in one hand. Right guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments below. Shall we do much more joint videos? Me and Metatron are thinking of doing some things. He's going to do some book reviews for me. So look forward to that. I'll see you next time, guys. And here's back to Metatron. Okay, well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. And also, thank you, Anthony, for making this contribution to this very interesting topic of shield usage in ancient Japan. I found the things that you uh, said very, very interesting. And I think that I will look even deeper into this very concept and, and hopefully upon this evidential proof, this general idea of shields not being used in ancient Japan will slowly disappear. As always, thank you so much for your time and if you like this video please give us a thumbs up and also go check my friend Anthony's channel to see many other videos about ninjutsu, historical samurai combat and so, and so on. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Sayonara. <laughs>